Hi, I'm the hydroponics guy. Today I want to talk to you about transferring soil plants into hydroponics and the three things that you should know to be successful uh, in transferring those plants. So why hydroponics? Well, hydroponics is much cleaner than growing with soil. Uh, there's no mold or mildew. Uh, you, water gauge shows you when to water. In fact, you can be watering your plants once every three weeks, every two to three weeks. And uh, if you have allergies, you can now have houseplants again, because again, like I said, there's no mold or mildew. Now, hydroponics by definition means growing without soil. There's many, many different ways that you can grow hydroponics uh, hydroponically. Uh, the system that we use, and I like this a lot, the system that we have, uh, this has been in Europe for 40 years. We've been using it for 30 years, um, and it really works. It has an outer pot that acts as a reservoir. It has an inner pot. That's the grow pot that has slits on the side, holes in the bottom to uh, uh, promote air circulation around the roots. It has a water gauge that tells you when to water. And then finally, we have these remarkable clay pebbles that replace the soil that actually wick the nutrient solution up to the plant. Uh, this is a very good system. Like I said, I like this system and each of these components uh, contributes to the overall health of the plant. So when you're starting out, I recommend that you start out with a complete system like this before you start substituting parts and you're going to have much better success uh, with your plants. Transferring soil plants to hydroponics. Number one is start small. Start with tabletop sized plants uh, until you get the feel on how the system works. Of course, you can, you can do you can transfer large floor plants like this, but this is where to start until you get a feel on how the system works. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to transfer a couple of these plants into hydroponics later uh, to show you exactly uh, how we do it. Number two is I recommend start with a healthy plant. Uh, this, although this works, it worked really well, it's not magic. And so uh, reviving a sick plant to start off with is probably not the best way to go. And, uh, you know, while I think of it, the other thing is... Don't start with a plant that has sentimental value because I want to stay friends. And if it doesn't work for your first plant, I can help you with that. Uh, but let's not start with something that has sentimental value. We have a list on the website to uh, help you choose which plants to start with. And like I said, when you stay small with the tabletop size plants like that, you're going to have much better success. You can go into something perhaps this large, but I wouldn't go any larger than that to start off with. Number two in transferring your soil plants to hydroponics is choosing pot size. And our system comes in many different sizes. Uh, this is a three inch planter. This is a four inch planter. We have a five inch planter. This is a seven inch planter. Uh, here is a six inch tall profile planter. And I like these tall planters a lot because, uh, especially for any plant that is going to sit upright, or grow upright and uh, uh, it has better stability for those kinds of plants and I like the distribution of water in the taller profile and the fact of the matter is is that roots do grow better vertically than they grow horizontally so this is a this is a pot that 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 I like a lot now we have other sizes also and I don't recommend starting out with this this is a seven inch tall and this is the nine inch tall uh, this is a little bit much to start off with. I would recommend sticking in, like I said, with tabletop size plants. Stay within this zone right here to start off with, and I think you're going to have better success. Number three in transferring your soil plants to hydroponic plants is uh, plant care after the transplant. And the most important element of that is watering your plant. How I like to think of this is, is that when you transfer a soil plant to a hydroponic plant, you're uh, uh, forcing the plant to switch from soil roots to water roots. Uh, and there's a transition period for this to happen. And the transition period is usually four weeks to six weeks. And during this period, uh, your plant might need a little tender loving care and you might need to make some adjustments on your watering, which I'll show you exactly how to do that. This is all worth it because once your plant adapts to the hydroponic system, it's much more durable, it's much stronger than it was as a soil plant, and you don't need to be nearly as careful with all of this after it gets established. But the important thing is, is that you have to give it time to get established. And watering is one of the number one things with uh, helping your plant get established. 
So as I said, we're going to transplant a couple of plants into the hydroponic system just to show you how easy it is to do. So uh, number one is you wash the soil off the roots, and that's pretty much the same for any kind of plant. And you just take the plant to the sink, or I use a garden hose outside if uh, the season uh, allows for that. And uh, wash the soil off the roots and try to get all the soil, uh, of course, without injuring the roots. But you need to get all the soil off the roots. And so I have here today a uh, areca palm. I have an anthurium, I have an aloe, an aloe vera, oops, and I have a lonely African violet over here. So we're going to transplant these plants. Uh, before the transplant, what I like to do is I soak the pebbles overnight. You want to start with saturated pebbles. I, st I start soak them overnight in a KLN solution. Growing new roots is job number one after transplanting. And KLN is a rooting solution that will give the roots a boost. It's not, your plants are not ready for regular nutrients or regular fertilizer, plant food, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're not ready for that yet. You need to give some, you give them something to give the roots a boost and KLN is uh, what I use. Okay, the first plant we're going to transplant today is the anthurium. And I chose a five inch planter for this. A uh, five inch planter might look a little big to start off with. But anthuriums are vigorous growers, and this grows upright, so I want to uh, use a 5-inch pot for stability. So what I did is I took the inner pot, I filled the bottom with uh, clay pebbles, and now and only about that much clay pebbles on the bottom of the pot. Now I position the plant on top of those pebbles, holding it firmly, and I'm planting much deeper than you would ever plant in soil. And that works out just fine with these clay pebbles. I add pebbles around the side of the pot. This is an important step. I use a dowel rod. Uh, I like to pack the pebbles down inside the pot so everything locks together. And our pebbles are irregular shape uh, and, and they vary in size. So they lock together extremely well when you do this. And secondly, um, it helps the pebbles integrate with the roots at the bottom of the pot. Okay, I add more pebbles. See how clean this is? Much, much cleaner than soil. In fact, you can do all of this at your kitchen sink. No problem. Insert the water gauge. Now here's another important step. I'm gonna pretend that this is the sink. Right here's my sink. Um, I want to use the water gauge as a handle and just to get things started, I like to run water through the system. Again, that saturates the pebbles, gets the roots wet and all of that just to get everything started. Put the plant in my outer pot and there you go. Here's my anthurium. It's that simple. We'll cover plant care with this in the uh, next segment. Next plant is the areca palm. Removed all the soil at the sink. And again, like I said, I chose a tall six inch planter for this. This is going to look just like this. I like the uh, uh, tall profile on any plant that grows upright, and I like the distribution of water, like I said before. So the inner pot with my six inch tall planter, uh, I put about two inches of stone on the bottom, not a lot, and it's the same process. I take the plant, position it on top of the stones, holding the plant firmly, and actually even pressing down a little bit on the pebbles. I add pebbles to the pot, Yeah, it's going to like this. I can tell those new roots are liking this already. Again, using my dowel rod to poke those pebbles down. You won't be injuring the roots, and you don't want any air gaps with this. Adding more pebbles. And there we are. Insert the water gauge. Now again, I have to take this to the sink. I'm gonna pretend this is my sink. Run water through the pebbles till it comes out the bottom to get everything saturated. And then put it in my outer pot. And there you have it, a happy Eureka Palm in hydroponics. Plant number three. This is my aloe, and you, as you can see, 
it really doesn't have a lot of roots. But you wait and see, growing in the hydroponic system, it's going to have a lot of roots. And so with this, I chose a five inch planter. Again, that looks really big, but you know what is, I want that five inch planter for stability. Uh, a smaller planter, an aloe is heavy on the top and a smaller planter is going to be, the plant is going to be top heavy. So I'm going to put it in a five inch planter. I just have to be really careful with my water because a five inch planter is going to hold a lot of water. So it's the same process. Cover the bottom of the pot and just the bottom of the pot, that's all you cover with the clay pebbles. Put the aloe vera on top of the pebbles. Oh, the poor lonely little thing. It's going to grow out nice. You wait and see. Pack the pebbles down with my trusty dollar rod. Add more pebbles. Press them all down and again. This is much deeper than you would plant in soil. But here he is. It looks pretty good. Insert my water gauge. Again, run water through the pebbles just to get everything started. Oops. I have to pretend this is a sink. I don't put it in the actual culture pot like this because what I want to have happen is that when I put this in the culture pot, let me get rid of this. When I put this in the culture pot, I don't want any standing water at the base at all. So that little ditty was at the sink, and now I have it in my culture pot with no sanding water at the base. Aloe vera in a five inch hydroponic planter. The last plant I'm working with today is the African violet. And as you can see, there's not a lot left to the roots after you remove the soil from a violet. And in fact, the roots are almost as thin as human hair. So you really have to be careful uh, with this plant. But once it gets established in the hydroponic system, you're gonna have a healthy, happy plant. In fact, let me show you this guy. Here's a hydroponic violet that my wife is growing. And uh, as you can see, that they take the hydroponics pretty well. Now you might get yellow leaves during the transition. With African violets, what I recommend is look for the new growth because the new growth is going to be the future uh, of the plant. So if you get some yellow petals, yellow leaves, uh, don't worry about it. So now with the African violet, it's the same, same process. I'm using a four inch planter for the African violet. So I'm putting stones in the bottom of the pot, just barely covering the bottom of the pot. And now with this, I gotta be careful. Positioning the plant on top of the pebbles. And now I add more pebbles around the plant. And like I said, I'm a little more careful with this than I was with the other plants. Because African violets are tender little guys. That aloe vera, you can do almost anything with that. African violet is a little different. And again, I'm pushing the stones down hard because I don't want air gaps and I want them to, build, uh, to lock in around the roots. There it is, my African violet in this new hydroponic planter. And again, what I do with this is take it to the sink, just like I did with all the other plants, run water through the pebbles, and then I put it in the outer pot with no standing water at the base. And we'll cover plant care later for the violet. And there it is, my African violet in a four inch hydroponic planter. So, okay, we've covered a lot of ground here. So uh, let's take a break. When I come back, we're gonna cover the plant care for the plants that I have transplanted.